Aaron and talk about numeration systems. And um, first one that I want to talk about is ours, um, just briefly. So we have our numeration system is called the Hindu Arabic numeration system. And the reason it's called that is because the Hindus are the ones who created it, and the Arabs are the ones who moved it out of uh, or into the Western world. So that's the numeration system that we use, the Hindu Arabic numeration system. And um, we've got some features about our numeration system that um, you're aware of, whether you're aware of being aware of them or not. Um, so one of them is that we have 10 numerals. Um, what are our 10 numerals? Zero through nine. So in base 10, which is what we have our numeration system, base 10, we do not have a numeral 10. We have something we call 10, right? But it's not one of our 10 numerals. Everybody following that? It's going to be really important when we get towards the end of this lesson. So our numerals are actually 0 through 9. And we have a place value system that's based on powers of 10 because it's base 10. So each of our placeholders in our number system have a power of 10 associated with them. So let's put five of these here, long enough that you can write something underneath them. Um, so this right here is what we call the ones place. What do we call the next place over when we have a number? This is our tens place, so it's worth 10. What's this one called? This is my hundreds place. And then I have my thousands place, and then I finally have in this picture, ten thousands place. And um, the reality is each of those is actually a power of ten. I can write the number one as ten to the zero. I can write the number ten as ten to the one. What's one hundred? Ten squared, a thousand, ten cubed, and ten thousand? to the fourth. And uh, what I tell students usually is the easiest way to remember is that the power tells you how many zeros you have. Okay, it's a one to one correspondence. <laughs> so four power, we've got four zeros. That's number 10,000. Um, and what I want you to remember and then of course is that uh, a power for exponential form actually just tells you how many of a number you have times itself. So this is n times. So if we have 10 to the fourth, what that really means is 10 times 10 by itself four times. Okay, so is everybody all right with that? Because we're about to look at some things that maybe aren't as familiar. So, survey, quick question. Who's had contemporary math? Okay. Wow, it's like this way and this way. Like the movie just splits <laughs> in the middle. Um, so, some of these you've seen in contemporary math. All right, so if you take contemporary math, um, recently you've probably seen some of this. Um, and we're not going to uh, do as much with this as we did in contemporary math. So you can breathe a little bit of side relief. We're going to hit on it in a little bit. Um, so what we're going to talk about is some of the different numeration systems and um, kind of look at the, the reasons maybe that we don't still use them today. That's the idea. Okay? So um, we have the Egyptian numeration system. The nice thing about the Egyptian numeration system really easy to go back and forth between our numbers and their numbers. It's no big deal, okay? So let me tell you what their symbols first look like. The Egyptian numeral, the first one, the vertical staff, looks like the talent mark, just like the number one. It's impossible to draw. Oh my god. I'm not kidding. Okay. I know, Kayla. I'm sorry. I'll get me to open it. It like only goes open. Yeah, it's like Well, I will tell you, I, I can turn them off. I'm going to have to open it up and have to pull a plug and Dr. Nichols doing that before. So you made the guys do it. Huh? That's so why you made the guys do it. I didn't make the guys do it. I did it. I just did it. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we, sorry. we digress. <laughs> um, a vertical step has the value of one. So that's kind of nice, right? It's actually what we say number one. Um, a heel bone looks like um, an upside down U or sort of like an in without the sick part, a little in. Um, a heel bone actually has the value 10. A scroll is the next one. A scroll looks like this. The idea of a scroll has a value of, remember it is 100. 
Lotus flyers got to be my favorite because I don't I don't draw well and um, it looks something like this. I'll buy this flower. What's its value? A thousand. The pointing finger looks something like this, like your pointing finger, uh, and it's ten thousand. Um, Polyloth or Burbo, or sometimes they're called, called a fish. Um, I've had one with, I think, called a whale or something like that. Um, but it looks kind of like, you know, like a tadpole with this or whatever. And again, I told you already that I don't draw well. That's probably one of the best ones I've ever drawn right there, just for you guys. Um, it actually has the value of 100,000. And our astonished man is definitely the best. And uh, he looks something like this. That looks like an astonished woman. But I think he's astonished because he's worth a million. <laughs> so these are the numeration systems. Now what we're not going to do is we're not going to turn them into um, engine. We're, we're not going to go back. We're not taking their system and turning it into ours. We're not taking ours and turning it into theirs. Right now, right? Those who just okay. So that's not what we're going to do. But what we are going to do is we are going to think about being within their number system and think about what number would have come before it and what number would have come after it. We're also in your group work homework. You're going to compare two numbers in their system and decide which one's bigger and why. Okay, that's all we're going to do with their number systems. So you're going to sort of put your mind in the sense that I'm going to pretend like I'm an Egyptian, however many years ago this was, and I've got these numbers to work with. Maybe I'm balancing something in a checkbook of sorts or whatever, or seeing who owes me what money and whatever. And this is what it would look like. I've got to make these decisions. Okay? All right, so the first numeral that we're going to work with is three squirrels and a heel bow. Okay? And what we're asked to do is we're asked to figure out what number comes before this and what number comes after this. And generally speaking, either both answers are quick and easy, or one's quick and easy and the other one requires a little more thought. Okay? So, in this particular case, the one that's easy is the one that comes after this. Okay? So these numbers right here, I know we said we're not going to change them, these all represent, you know, a thousand, I'm sorry, a hundred, right? So this is like 310. Right? Because that's what the field one represents. What do I have to do to add an additional one, which is the number after this to it? I have to put a one after it. Add that vertical stroke at the end. So I'm doing part B because that one's the easy one on this one. So I've got my three scrolls, I've got my one heel bone, and I just add a stroke to it. Okay. The other one's the one that's a little harder here. I need to take away one. I need to go backwards from you know this number. So what's going to happen to that heel bone? We're going to make it nine strokes, right? So I still have my three scrolls, and now I'm going to make nine strokes. Um, let me just also kind of insert into here that um, depending on uh, what books that I've used or whatever, some books do it like what I just did, they just write it all out on one line. And some books start stacking things, which is what our contemporary math book did. And so they stack them if they've got, you know, like six items, they'll put three in them. Or if it's nine, it's put five on top of four on bottom. It's I, I don't care what you do, it doesn't matter. As long as they're all there, I'm good. Okay. Alright, so note the value in eight does not seem to be a special efficient use of my time. It's not horrid. But I don't really want to write down nine strokes and nine this and nine this. Like a number that would be like 9,999. I don't want to write that down. I especially don't want to write it down if I'm an Egyptian because it means I'm probably carving it in some kind of stone or wood. Right? Okay, so this kind of doesn't seem like a very effective um, method in terms of efficiency. It's not efficient. All right, so let's look at another one. This is the Babylonian. So the Babylonian system is nice, and it's, oh, the other reason that the other, that system is not so nice is because, just like I said, I'm not a very good artist. And um, some of those, they just require a little bit more than I want to put out. I mean, like, you know, I'd rather write number four. I don't want to write down four lotus flowers. So that, that's also sort of cumbersome enough. The Babylonians, however, I like their numbers because I can write them very easily. They only have two different numerals. 
One numeral looks like an upside down triangle. Or it should look like an upside down filled in triangle. And it has the value of one. The other numeral looks more or less like a less than sign. Um, it's kind of thicker, kind of on the edges. It's more like this. As long as you're writing a less than sign, I'm okay with it. But it looks kind of like this when you're both drawing it. And um, this actually has a value of 10. There's only two symbols, so it's easy to remember the symbols. It's not hard to even sure remember for me, I guess, um, you know, which one's more. But then there's none of that one. I don't have any issues with that. Um, the interesting things about their system, though, is that the Babylonians have Babylonians <laughs> had that the Egyptians did not have is that they have a place value system. Okay? So we have a place value system. It's all based on the number 10, right? And so I, I can't put, for instance, a number 15 in my one spot, right? We don't have that possibility, okay? Um, and neither, the Egyptians, they didn't have any place value. They just added strokes, they added lines, they added this, they added that, and, and it just, you know, he added it all up and it was what it was. Well, here we've got a place value system, it's a base 60 system. So in our system, we have our ones place, and then we have our tens place, right? They have their ones place, and then they have their sixties place, and then they would have sixty squared and sixty cubed, and we can keep going to the left um, you know, as far as you want. Power to sixty, just like we have to Now the other thing is that to write them, that means that we can go up to fifty-nine in each spot. So I could put fifty-nine worth of something in this spot before I moved over to the sixtieth place. So if I wanted the number 59, that's probably the worst number in your system, right? Because I'm going to have to draw five of these less than signs, and then I'm going to have to draw 10, sorry, nine, nine of these little triangles. Everybody with me? The 60 is really nice, because then I'm just drawing one place over, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, just like in the... Um, supposed to go. Okay, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is the same thing we do with the Egyptians. We want to know the number that comes before it, the number that comes after it. And the number that I'm going to show you is one of these really fun ones to write. So I want you to draw one upside down triangle. I want you to draw five of the less than signs. And then I want you to draw nine upside down triangles. And yes, they need to be filled in. That's what we're intending when we just wrote that. 
or as two times one, because it could be in one spot, right? Um, or even as one times 60 and one times one, because there's no sort of like, I put in the red marks underneath it that sort of differentiate it for you. There's no red marks in their system, okay? That was my, my overlay of what I was doing. So it really could also be that it's one times 60 and one times one is number 61. That seems a little problematic, right? So imagine you're having a business that you're operating and you're trying to tell them that they really owe you 120 and they look at them and they say, oh, I owe you two. That's not good, right? So also the numbers and the numerals are cumbersome to write. I don't want to write out five plus hand signs and nine triangles to be nine. That does not sound like that to me, right? So there's a lot of ambiguity in system. There's a lot of problems actually with it. So let's go on to our friends the Mayans. You know they're really smart, right? They're about to be wrong. Because 2012 is nearly over, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They think we're about to turn the page to counter. It's 2012 is probably not going to end. But if it does end, I hope you guys are right with God and everything's okay. <laughs> so, you know, they have three numerals, and I can write all of their numerals with ease as well. I like their numerals, they're easy to write. I've got one with a dot, and it has the value one. I've got one that's a vertical, or sorry, vertical, horizontal line, and it has the value of five. That's sort of different, we haven't had one of those yet. Um, and then they have something that the other, system, the other two systems didn't have. They have what looks like a shell. Um, that almost looks like a biscuit or something, but it's supposed to be a blue shell. And it actually has the value of zero. They actually have a zero placeholder. Now, that would have solved one of the issues with a bad one, right? If I could have had a zero placeholder in my one spot, I would have eliminated part of what was going on. Okay? So the zero is actually a really good thing to have. So um, they do have a place value system. It's a modified base 20 system. Let me come back to that in a minute. Um, it's written vertically from bottom to top. The lowest value is on the bottom, and the highest value is on top. Just like our lowest value is on the right, and our highest value is on the left. Everybody with me? I think I just said it back. Good. I need to turn around. Our lowest value is on the right, and our highest value is on the left. Is that what I said? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so for the Mayan, the lowest value is on the bottom, and the highest value is on the top. And they put the dar, the, the dars, the bars <laughs> underneath the dots in each placeholder. So, for instance, if they wanted to represent the number six, they would put a bar and a dot on top of it. So the dots go on top of the bars. Okay. So those are some features of their system. Let me go back to that modified base twenty business. So here's the deal. They have a place value system that goes bottom up. So I'm going to write it that way. They have a ones place. So there's some number over here. I'm not meaning this bar to be a vertical bar like their number five. I'm just saying the placeholder, okay? Um, then they have the 20s place right here. Okay. And here's where it goes different. They do not have 20 squared, which is what a true base 20 system would be. They have 20 times 18. You know why the Mayans wanted to do 20 times 18 instead of 20 squared? They used a calendar with 360 days. That's why they did it. 360. The next placeholder then is 20 times 18 squared, and then we would go up from here. 20 times 18 cubed and so forth. So we could figure out what each of these are, but they, they aren't really powers of 20, it's really powers of 18. Okay. And we've got this extra 20 from in. And even as I say that, I'm actually, I'm just going to make some little check now. It was awfully late last night when I was switching this up. What's that?
our powers on 20. There we go. 20 squared. There we go. That's it. The powers go on the 20. And the 18 gets them in there to make them 360. That's what it looks like. Of course, you're not going to be changing any of these around, but that is the correct ordering of what we have. But we are going to do just like we did in the last section, right? Or the last ones. We're going to consider a value. The value we're going to consider has two dots with one line underneath it, and then four dots with one line underneath it. Two dots in a line, four dots in a line. And the first question is, what Mayan numeral comes before this value, what Mayan numeral comes before? Neither of these are particularly difficult to do. The one that's before is a little bit easier. So what would be before this value? Yes, do you know where you would take the dot away? It's actually the bottom. Yeah, I think I might need to do this for us for a moment. Again, like I did in the last one. Whoops. So this bottom value is a bar and four dots, which is the number what? Nine, and this is two dots in a bar, which is the number what? Seven. Now don't go adding seven and nine, that's not what's here. Because the most natural association is that that nine is in the ones place, and that seven is in the twenties place. Okay, so we've got seven back of 20 crayons, and we've got nine crayons left over, or something like that. Good idea. Okay. So what nine numeral comes before us? So we do need to remove, remove one dot, and we'll remove the one dot from the nine, because that nine is the ones place, just like our nine is on the right hand side of our number. So, so we're going to do two dots, a line, and then we're going to do three dots in a line. That would be the number before this. What line and numeral will come after this? Okay, so I would, instead of having the four dots and the line link, that those would become two lines. And then I have a line, and I have two dots. And I've got another problem. The problem that I have is that this could be read as 7 times 20 plus 10, which is what we need. Right? 7 on top in the 20s place, 10 in the 1s place. Um, or it could be read as 17. You put all those lines together, and there's three lines, and it's all 15. Then we got two more, that's 17. Or even 13 times 20. For instance, I could do this to it. Oh, I should have said 12. Yeah, I should have said 12. I think I took a dot off after making it. So let's make that say 12. 12 times 20 plus 5. 245. Pretty sure this could get us in a mess with our book. Even with the zero, which fixes some things, it, it would fix some of our issues that we have with the Babylonians. It doesn't fix it all. Um, any questions? Yeah. Yes. Well, um, future test, will you ask us to find the value? Like, no. We're not going to ask you to find the value. I am just pointing out as we go along, it's going to ask you some questions when you're looking at your problems of benefits or pitfalls, if you will, <laughs> of other enumeration systems. So, there are definite benefits, right? I mean, it's pretty easy to write dots and lines in the shelves like I can do that, right? Uh, but it still has a problem. At least they have a number zero, which they have didn't have. I mean, there's pros and cons. You're going to talk about pros and cons of them when you're doing your book problems. The Roman numeration system. Now, this one's probably um, one you've seen before, before you ever got to college, right? You've seen Roman numerals. You may not have seen all of the Roman numerals. And um, that's okay, but you have seen them before. So let's write what they are. Sometimes you see this written as an I, sometimes it's just written as a single with no, no top and bottom. That's fine either way. Um, we've got B, X, L, C, D, and N. And those are the only numerals. What value is the What value is the B? Five. What value is the X? Ten. Those are the 
one do you use most common on outlines and things like that? You see those used a lot, right? The other ones you do see used occasionally. Okay, so let me ask you, where have you seen Roman numerals used outside of outlines in the class? Football. 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 Football.
So if you'll notice their numbers stopped in thousand. What happens if um, you're the Pharaoh and you need a million bushels of wheat? We need another symbol, right? So um, in avoiding to, in the effort to avoid additional symbols, what they did is they introduced some symbols with bars over them. So if you have a portion of a number that has a single bar over it, it means times a thousand. And if you have a double bar over something, it means times a million. Okay? So for instance, if we wanted to do 9,000, I don't know why I like nine, so I was doing this. But if we wanted to do 9,000, we would first write the number nine, which we just did a minute ago. How did we write nine? IX. That's nine, and we turn it into a thousand by putting the number, the, the, the bar over it. And then if we had a step after that, like let's say, let me just change this. Let's say it said 95, 16. Well, the 9,000 is still IX with bar over it. Okay? And then we would keep going after that. How do we get 500? So that was D. How do I get 16? And then six one. So how do I get a ten? That's X. And then how do I get a six? VI. So I don't want you to think that the whole number has to have a bar, but it doesn't. But just the number that's multiplied by a thousand. Which in this case is nine, nine thousand. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at one then. Same thing on this one. We're going to take the number MCMX. And we're actually going to find the number that comes before the number comes after, and then we're going to talk about the equivalent. So let's do this. Let's do the number before and the number after, and then we'll say C. Well, okay, let's do example four, and then we'll say number five next time. All right, so what number would come? Let's do let's do after. That's the easy one. What number comes after this MC and X without even knowing what that number is? What would you choose? You just put an I at the end, right? Sure. So this is M. C, M, X, I. That's the number that comes after it. How are you going to get the number that comes before? The X has got to change. You put the I in front of the X. Yes, you do. Because we need to turn this 10 at the end into a 9. And so that's M, C, M, I, X. Alright, and then we're going to turn it into um, our numeral, the Hindu Arabic numeral, uh, that's our numeral for this. So let's do this. First of all, you have to identify anywhere that you have numbers that change the order. So what is the M? Here's what I do is I write the numbers out. What is M? A thousand. What is C? One hundred. Oops. Too many zeros. Here's a thousand. This is 100, and then there's another N here, so there's another 1,000, right? And then the X is 10. Well, if I have 100 and then 1,000, that's a subtractive feature. You get that? Okay, any time that the smaller number comes before the larger one, I've got a subtraction going on. So there's a subtraction right there. The 1,000's okay, but I don't have a 100 and a 1,000. What's that number really supposed to be? 900, yeah. And then I have the 10 at the end, so there's 10. So what is this total? 